Hey, everybody. The NFL draft is officially one month away. Stuff is going to start getting real. And who better to bring in than Daniel Jeremiah? I consider this guy my favorite draft guy, of course, from the NFL Network, Move the Sticks podcast. DJ, we always appreciate you joining us this time of the year. No, I appreciate that. And uh, the good news is I feel like if I need any money, uh, the ATM is just over your shoulder and you can get that taken care of for me. So it's going to work out. I am actually at the final four in New Orleans, getting ready for Villanova in the final. Nova, four. let's yeah. go. Yeah, absolutely. It should be good. A uh, lot of blue bloods down here. All four programs are pretty amazing. Um, but everywhere I go, people are asking about the draft. And, and I know you put in so much time studying all of these prospects and your reports are incredible. Um, so the Eagles, first time ever, three picks in the first round. Let me ask you first, do you think that they will make all three picks in the first round? No chance. No chance. Zero chance. Um, I I would be – I would say I'd be shocked, but that doesn't even come close to describing how surprised I would be. Um, To me, I think at least one of these – I mean, we've kind of said, okay, well, they trade back once. I'm sitting here going, like, I wouldn't be surprised if they they trade back with a couple of these picks, you know. Um, So, yeah, no, I I don't anticipate they'll stay there. I would imagine they're also going to try and get some assets in next year's draft. It just makes sense, like from from a timeline standpoint, if you're going to try and – you know, you can build around Jalen Hurts this year, but also accumulate some assets for next year. And you feel like after this year, you got a good feeling, you know, is is he the guy or not? Um, And if for some reason he doesn't take the necessary steps, then you'd be loaded up next year. You know, Howie Roseman, he's traded for the last six drafts in the first round he doesn't like sitting still no no how he likes how he likes the juice he likes to move around and get some excitement and he's positioned you know better than anybody else in this particular draft and I think the other thing is you kind of look at the location of where they are Um, you know it's not a great quarterback year but there are some you know quarterbacks that can go in the first round and when you look at the Pittsburgh Steelers picking 20 and and you're the Eagles and you've got three picks nestled right in front of them as it you know them being a, a quarterback needy team Man, it's a, it's a great spot to be in. Okay, so in your opinion, do you think that they would actually take a quarterback in the first round? The Eagles? No, no, I, I don't. I, I don't see that happening. I think this is it's going to give them an opportunity to try and build around Jalen Hurts. I do think the Pittsburgh Steelers, on the other hand, I, Mike Tomlin's kind of shown his hand a little bit on that, saying you know that they're going around looking at all these quarterbacks. He's been very uh, visible at all these quarterback pro days, which is great for the Eagles because you want the team nestled right behind you uh, to be in the quarterback market. You got a for sale sign with your picks um, and you got to get it. You want a quarterback, you got to get in front of the Steelers. So I think that works out pretty well in Philly. Is there a guy, if you're the Eagles, that you would trade up for when you're sitting there 15, 16 and 19? Yeah, there, there are a couple, you know, I, I look at, you know, who would kind of drop a little bit or slide a little bit. Garrett Wilson would be one for me. Um, I just, I, I think he's the best receiver in the draft. I think he'd be an awesome uh, guy to pair up with Devontae going forward and let those guys play together. Um, that would be one I would consider, you know, Drake London is another wide out that, that I'm real high on and I don't think he gets to 15. So that might not be one where you have to go up that far, but maybe just up a little bit, just to ensure that you get the guy if, if you really like him. Uh, you look at the edge rushers, you know, I know that they've been active in the edge rusher market and bringing over Hassan Reddick, but I could definitely see if, if one of those guys starts to drift a little bit, um, you could go get him. Jermaine Johnson would probably be the, the greatest chance you'd have at one of those top four guys. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I, that one you might have to pay a little more for. I don't know if they do that. So in your opinion, out of those three first round picks, Would you say it is highly, highly likely that they take a defensive lineman with one or two of them? Uh, Yeah, I I would be equally, you know, he said he'd be shocked if they picked all three. Um, I'd be equally shocked if if they didn't walk away with a defensive lineman with one of their picks. You know, even if they ended up only having two first round picks and they maneuvered around the board a little bit, I would anticipate that one of those will be along the front. I mean, that goes back years and years and years, as you as you know, I mean, that they are. They're usually playing their best ball when they're dominant in the trenches, and they've invested a lot of high picks um, on, on the line of scrimmage. So I would I would expect that to continue. And with Fletcher Cox, Brandon Graham, yeah. you know, a little long in the tooth. Left. Yeah, a little long in the tooth there, you know. So kind of this new era. Now I'm I'm pretty bullish on guys that they've that they've got there, you know. And you, when you look at obviously they paid Josh Sweat, so you know what they think of him. 
Um, and uh, give me my man. Oh uh, gosh, now from I'm gonna his name's gonna escape me. My defensive tackle from Arkansas State that I loved. Uh, Milton Williams. Milton Williams. Oh yeah, Louisiana okay. Tech. Louisiana Tech. Yes, mm-hmm. Milton Williams. Thank you very much, Uncle Milton. Um, yeah. So I'm 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 a fan of his game going back to the draft process, and I thought you saw him show some bursts and some flashes last year. So I still think they've got they've got pretty good depth. Um, but as those old guys start to kind of move on, I think just another wave, you know, keep it rolling. Yeah, we're looking at the defense and we say, OK, they need pass rushers. They also need safeties and they also probably need another cornerback. Are you thinking it's most likely they view defensive line as their top priority on defense? Well, I think when you just look historically, if you want to fill in some of those other spaces, you can do it in the middle rounds. Um, those premium picks, those first round picks, you usually look at the premium positions. Um, so that's why I would think the defensive line would jump to the front because I think the defensive lineman you're going to get in the first round typically is going to look a little different once you get out of that range. Whereas I think corners, you know, you look at corners, safeties, you know, linebackers, you can find quality starting caliber players there in those middle rounds. By the way, I'm so distracted by the beauty uh, of where you're at. I'm so jealous. <laughs> I, 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 it's overcast feet. today. It's overcast today. Come on, man. Too not bad. Us. Look oh, at all those clouds. Bad. Look at all those clouds up there. Look at that. It's, <laughs> yeah, like, you miss- the sev- it's like low 70s. I'm freezing out here. Oh, poor guy. You're, you're missing the weather in Philly, I'm sure. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, tremendously. <laughs> tremendously. Yeah. How, I've how forgotten ba- what it feels like to wear a jacket. You know, I just I, I don't even know what it feels like anymore. Well, now with that weather out there, you need a heat lamp. I see everybody when it's in the lower 70s, they got to get a heat lamp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Padre, we've got opening day for the Padres coming up here uh, soon, and that's like, hey, tell the kids, say hey, you better wear a jacket. It can get in the 60s at night now. That's unbelievable. Get the hot chocolate, too, at the game. <laughs> so uh, when you look at the Eagles and what they've done so far in the offseason, are you a little surprised they did not add a big veteran receiver? Big, I mean, size-wise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, getting a power forward to kind of complement what they have. No, I mean, I thought Allen Robinson would have been one that, you know, maybe would have fit there, made some sense. He ends up going to the Rams. Um, But, you know, there's other options in here. You know, one of the names we didn't mention, if you want to stick where you are and pick there, Traylon Burks uh, from Arkansas is a really good player. And I know some people will look and say, hey, man, mid four fives, he's not that explosive. He's just a little bit more of a build-up speed guy, and he's got – a bunch of huge plays in the SEC. I'm talking like 90 yard touchdowns. So he can, he can run. He's just not a, he's not a great starter, which doesn't lend itself to a great 40 time, but six, three, 225 pounds. If you want to find a power forward, that could be a good fit. So do you think that they do take a receiver though? Uh, in the first round, do you think one of those three? Would that be three years in a row then? Right. Is that yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. You know, I, 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 I would not be surprised at all. I, to me, I, I think the way the league is right now, look at what these receivers got on the open market. You're talking about Christian Kirk and company getting 20 plus million a year. Look at what the trade, you know, was able to net in, in the Tyreek Hill deal and the Devontae Adams trade. So you're sitting here going, well, wait a second. We've always said you can find wideouts anywhere and just be patient and wait. But now when you look at the cost of re-signing these guys, plus the cost, if you want to go out in the veteran market and free agency or the trade market, what that's going to cost you. I think you can make a strong case that you should take these wideouts in the first round. You get that fifth year, that's five years of control, um, and you get a high-quality player at a position that the league's valuing more now than, than maybe it ever has. I think that's a great point. And your head coach is a former receiver, former <laughs> receivers coach, and he, he, you should see him in practice. I'm sure you've seen him digging his feet into the ground with those routes and cutting. Uh, and Jeff Lurie, he said at his press conference this week, he said, we need to have a dynamic passing attack. So yeah. uh, I know you discussed a couple guys that you think could possibly fall at receiver or you would trade up. Um, do you think that the Eagles can come away with a starter at receiver and defensive line in the first round? Absolutely. I, I think it's possible. You not only can get starters. You can get instant impact guys uh, that can step right in and play. You know, when you look at the the edge rushers that you could, you know, potentially have there. I think Carl this is one that you see mentioned a lot. That's probably kind of in his range, um, and he's ready to play right away. And the wideouts we've just mentioned, you can add on to that with Jamison Williams, who, talking to buddies that were at the Alabama Pro Day the other day, said that he's ahead of schedule. He looks great. He could be ready to go by training camp. If that's the case, you're talking about potentially a steal. You know, you want to get dynamic. Um, we, you know, I shoot when I was there and you had Deshaun and, and the impact that he had, 
now you get out and get somebody like this to take the top off and and let give Devonte and Goddard some room to work in the in the middle of the field and underneath. I mean that's a that's an intriguing option, uh, big time. So if I was to ask you in the first round, mm-hmm. what is the biggest strength as far as position? They're they're loaded with them all over the first round. What would you say? Yeah. I think wide out. I, I know edge rusher is is right there with it. I think those are the top two positions in terms of depth. Um, but I, I actually really think it's going to be wide receiver when it's all said and done. I think we could see as many as seven wide outs, you know, go in the first round. It would not shock me. And, and pass rushes, you're probably looking, you know, six or so of those. So um, those are, to me, far and away the best positions in this draft. Not just the first round, really the depth of it through the whole draft. All right, now I, I watch your mock drafts uh, every week or two, and I'm sure you're going to be loading them up now going into the final stretch run of the month. <laughs> um, do you lock in on a couple guys for the Eagles? Are you feeling anything? Well, I mean, I've, I'm, I'm told not to feel Devin Lloyd, right? Because I've, uh, I've made <laughs> that mistake in years past and haven't been on the media side of this thing for a decade now. Um, they're not taking linebackers. I know they're not taking linebackers, but golly, it just looks like such a great fit um, to, to plug a guy like that in. But I'm going to, I'm going to stay away from that. And I'm going to say that my, you know, the feeling that you locked in on somebody, it's more so positions, you know, than, than players. And I think you kind of hit it. Um, kind of the theme of this chat is, is edge rusher and, and a playmaker. I think those are, those are two of the things I think they come away with. And if I were to ask you and put you on the spot, Jalen hurts, obviously, yeah. They did look at other quarterbacks. I believe that they looked at Deshaun Watson and Russell Wilson, and those guys just weren't interested in coming to Philadelphia. So who knows what would have happened if they got a meeting with Deshaun Watson or Russell Wilson and what they would have given up. But it looks like Jalen Hurts is, in fact, the guy for this year. Do you think that he's going to be their quarterback in 2023? Man, I'm going to have such a better answer for that question, uh, you know, in, in uh, 10 months from now. But, uh, no, I, I, I do. I think they're going to put some pieces around him. I think they're going to find a, a different way to win games than maybe they have in the past. Um, you, saw, you saw them kind of make that transition last year. Um, I, I think they're going to find in a watered-down NFC that they can, they, can, they can win a little bit differently than maybe they historically have or maybe they want to. Uh, but I think they're going to find success after this offseason in, in, a, in a conference, in a division that's a little watered down. I think they stick with them. Yeah, it wasn't too bad to see some of these quarterbacks like Russell <laughs> Wilson leave the NFC, but Tom Brady came right back in. Um, it's true. If, if I'm asking you in the NFC East, who would you most like to be right now? Eagles situation with three first-round picks. Yeah. The Giants have two picks in the top seven, right? Yeah, yeah. And then you've got Washington with Carson Wentz. And I know, look, Dallas looks like the most talented team, but which which team do you think you would want to be right now growing and building again? Well, I mean, Dallas, you mentioned it. Dallas has got, you know, they've got the, the most reliable quarterback. So you probably start with that conversation. But if you're asking me individually who I'd want to be, I'd want to be the Eagles because there's nothing more fun than having draft capital and being creative in the team building process. And so they hold the most cards um, and, and they can they can kind of do the most damage here, not only in this draft, but accumulating resources in, in, in the drafts to follow. So personally, I'd have a heck of a lot more fun uh, with the Eagles uh, tools in their tool belt. But I, I couldn't argue against the fact that, you know, usually you, you say what organization would you rather be? You start with the quarterback position. And I think that would be Dallas. And if I were to ask you uh, to rank the quarterbacks, would you rather have Jalen Hurts or Carson Wentz at this point? Yeah, I think I know. I know what Carson is now. Unfortunately, you know, is not what he was. And and I think with Jalen, there's still a little bit of a mystery there. You know, so I think there's a little more upside in, in what Jalen can become. So I'm going to go with what I what I don't know in Jalen Hurts versus what I do know, and, and maybe not in a positive standpoint of where Carson is right now. You've seen the Eagles drafts over the last three, four years after winning the Super Bowl. And for a couple of years, they only had like five picks. Now yeah. they won again, 10 picks, nine picks the last couple of years. And it looks like they had a pretty good draft last year. Some questioned the previous two drafts, but they talked about kind of changing the process a little bit. Um, Jeff Lurie talked the other day about how there was a tie with everybody yeah. with the J.J. Ortega Whiteside pick. Do you think that they have found a better process now? It looks like last year. I think so. I mean, I thought it went went off great. I, I you know, 
I looked at it after the draft. We had our researchers because I said, man, it was interesting. I, I felt like almost every time the Eagles were picking, I felt, man, for my value, just how I viewed players and how I slotted players and ranked players, I thought they got tremendous value um, all the way through the entire draft. And it, it turned out, I think it was, in terms of where I had guys rated with where they got them, I think they had the most value of, of any team. Now, that's just my rankings, my opinion. Other people have it differently. But me personally, yeah, I thought where they got guys last year, uh, I thought they hit a home run. And we saw a lot of those guys get on the field and, and make an immediate impact. So the challenge is now you got to stack it. You know, you got to stack it with another good one this year. And they have definitely have the resources to get that done. Do you think the mistakes at receiver, uh, whether it's J.J. or Thega Whiteside or looking like Jalen Rager at this point, um, it seems like there was a lot of opinions, coaches' opinions, scouts' opinions. Uh, then you have the, the talent evaluators, Howie and Andy Weidel. Um, what do you think went wrong with evaluating those specific receivers? Yeah, I mean, I think they're, they're different cases. You know, I, I think sometimes you can get, uh, you know, a little bit hung up on, okay, this is, this is what our desire is. We're trying to find the speed receiver. So let's go find the guy who we think is the most explosive and the speed receiver. Well, you get so focused on that, you say, you miss out on the fact that this other guy is just a much better football player. You know, and you go back to JJ's year, you know, trying to get a bigger, you want that power forward, somebody can play above the rim. And that was the one thing that he did really well. And then again, you can look at it and say, well, yeah, but there's just better players that we, that we passed up. And, you know, we all learn and we all, you all make mistakes and you try and learn from them and grow. I think, you know, I love the fact that they went back to the well with Devontae Smith and didn't let the, the fact that they've got a couple misses, you know, to kind of, you know, take their courage, so to speak. Um, and I thought, you know, the fact they went right back to the well and they got it right, uh, that was encouraging. And why not? Why not go back to the well again? You know what works. You know what plays. You can't go wrong. We just take the best football player. Obviously, you were with the Eagles organization, and you see Howie Roseman get a three-year contract extension. They have made the playoffs for the last five years. They won a Super Bowl. He created a Super Bowl roster going into yeah. 2017. Do you think he deserves that three-year contract extension? Yeah, I think you just you just spelled it out. I mean, that's the that's the case right there. You know, people can have opinions. It's a passionate fan base, and you can always look at this pick or that pick and. Um, you know, you can find mistakes for anybody, but at the end of the day, you know, I'm, I'm a huge baseball fan and it doesn't do any good to say we got the best farm system every year. If your major league team stinks and just like saying, well, that you nailed the draft every year, man, you got good draft grades and you got good players. Yeah. But did it make a good team? Did you make the playoffs? Did you win a championship? And I think the fact that how he's been able to accomplish that he's won a championship and they've been a consistent winner. So you can nitpick and you can find the mistakes that he's made, and I'm, I'm sure he'll readily admit a lot of those. Uh, but at the end of the day, you're, you're paid. Your job is to build a winning team, and he's done that. How about Eagles owner Jeff Lurie? You've been in the draft room with him. Yeah. There's there's a lot of reports that he's more involved now and, and actually you know taking sides with picks. What was your experience, and do you think that he is more involved now? Well, he was he was involved in that he wanted to he wanted to be in the know, you know. So he read he read reports. Um, he would ask questions, which you know I've used the you know I've been asked this a little bit, and I've said I think that's healthy. You know, if I own the team, um, I'm not saying here we need to take Smith over Jones or Jones over Smith, but hey, explain yourself. Why do you like this guy? You know, you said this about a player, but your grade is that. Why is that? Can you help me understand that a little bit? Um, you know, hey, we, it seems like I listened to the coaches and the coaches said they wanted this, uh, but it seems like we're maybe low on these guys. Just it, just explain it to me. Um, and I, I always thought that was a good thing. You know, I think some people in a you know, perfect world, you think somebody just writes checks and and uh, and they show up to the games and cheer on the team. But I, I mean, I, this is not a this is not somebody that's that's meddling or somebody that's you know demanding that they take this person or that person. I think he just wants to be informed and. I think when you're in the draft process, it, whether it's the owner um, or whether it's the intern, if you get somebody in there that can ask good questions and, uh, and try and lead to better results, I think that's a good thing. Do you find it interesting? I remember talking to Howie Roseman many years around the draft, and he said, we're never rebuilding. We're always yeah. reloading. We're always going for it. But, you know, he is saying this year they're not a player or two away. They're not all in. And he said that they're not all in. And, and they talked about the team building again. 
Do you consider this a rebuild? I know Jeff Lurie called it a transition year last year, but do you consider this a yeah. rebuild? I don't. I don't because I think this is still, if you looked and you, you combine the offensive line and the defensive line and you looked at the talent, I would say this is still a top 10 team in terms of the trenches. Now, there's other, other holes you need to fill in. It's still the jury's out here on Jalen Hurts, whether or not he's going to be the guy. It's hard. I mean, it's hard to suck when you're really good on the offense and defensive lines. It just is like, you're going to win. You're going to get the 500, you know, because that's where the, you know, so many games are won and lost. So I, I hear rebuilding, I guess my mind goes to three wins, you know, four win team. Like I don't see how they could be a three or four win team. They're going to be too good in the trenches. All right. And I know you cover chargers games yeah. all the time. You do their games. I saw you in Philadelphia uh, when they played the Eagles um, how about this linebacker, Kaiser White, that they got? What do you think? Yeah, he's a good player. John, he can run. You know, in, in, today, in today's game, you got linebackers. They have to be able to run. They have to be able to cover. He's a, he's a former college safety who made the transition to linebacker. He got better every year with the Chargers. Um, now, if you want to say, you know, why was he available late in the process? You say, okay, we well, didn't have as many impact stops or plays. But he's a he's a tackle collector. You know, he's just there's something to be said for that guy. You know, you maybe want somebody a little bit more dynamic to put next to him. But he, this guy can cover. He's going to collect tackles. He's very reliable, very dependable. And he's gotten better. Um, so I think it's a really, really solid signing for them. So this next month for you, I know you've been busy already. You're breaking down every single player in the draft. Just how nuts is this next month for you when we get down to the nitty gritty here going into this last 30 days well it's fun you know the, the the hard part is getting all these guys watched and i try and get you know the majority of them watched before the combine because we cover that event and you, you really want to kind of know those guys so now is a great time for me where i can go back kind of look back over some things i can look at how i have players uh graded maybe i have three or four corners that are close together i can really just kind of hone in on those little projects and try and sort those guys out and then, uh, as we always like to say in scouting, this is the time of the year where you chase ghosts. So you see pro days, times, and these guys you never even heard of before, and you're trying to chase them down and see if you can find what diamond in the rough here. Uh, I was joking with, with one of my buddies in the league the other day that this is that time of year where you got to watch 15 to find one. Um, so you, you find, you know, you hear stories about, oh, he showed up here, or this guy was a transfer, he didn't start, but if you just watch this and that, and it's like it's, you're chasing ghosts is what you're doing. What does your latest mock draft say for the Eagles in the first round? Oh, my gosh. I can't remember that. It's been like a week. I can't remember who the heck I had them taking. I know I had them taking Devin Lloyd just so that I could get some text messages, uh, you know, for people saying they're not taking – they'll never take a linebacker. They're not taking a linebacker. I'm like, ah, let's let's live a little. Hey, why not, man? You'd, you'd have the, the greatest, you know, odds against pick ever. 43 years, I think it's been, 1979 or something like that. <laughs> yeah, no big deal. I had the Packers taking wideouts too. Why not? Let's, let's, let's just go for it this year <laughs> against the norm. Hey, well, listen, I got to tell you, you do a fantastic job. Yeah. And the amount of work you put into this every year, it shows. And, and I read all of your stuff. I watch you on NFL Network. I'm going to look forward to your draft coverage and Move the Sticks podcast as well as your Twitter site. Uh, it's great. And, and, and you have created quite an industry. Um, and you keep growing every year. I, I'm really impressed with the work you're doing well i appreciate you man you've been a good friend all these years um it's great to catch up with you and good luck to the fighting andy weidels down there at the final four yeah i mean it's going to be fun three first round picks kids in candy stores whatever you want to say this is gonna be a lot of fun for them and uh, we appreciate your time and look forward to you on the nfl network coming up here in a month thanks bud see you man